Welcome to Startup Hack. Today we're going to be continuing on our series of coding for entrepreneurs. I'm a startup founder and developer and I know the perfect balance between the two. So I'm doing a series of coding tutorials that include easy projects to start up uh, to make it easier for your startup to start your business, build the things you need, or if you're just learning so that you can be more efficient in managing your developers or contractors, great. No matter what the reason is for learning to code, I know it will only make your business better. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Startup Hack. My name is Spencer Thomason. I am the CEO and co-founder of Clean Router, as well as many other products. Here are some lessons that I've learned building a successful business while challenging startup norms. My challenge is to push you to rethink startup success. Welcome to Startup Hack. All right, let's go ahead and dig in. So this is the third in a series of tutorials showing how we're going to use Entity Framework, or EF Core, in ASP.NET Core Razor pages to build an app. The tutorial builds a website for a fictional university. The site includes functionality such as student admission, course creation, and instructor assignments, and this tutorial uses the code-first approach. So we're going to dig in and start talking about Razor pages with EF Core and ASP.NET. So let's go ahead and switch over to our, uh, to our screens here. And now, one of the first things that we're going to work on and our app that we've been working on here, let's, uh, so I actually made sure I pulled the latest, and then I set this as the startup project. And then we're going to kick this guy off and get this guy running here because this takes a second here. So we're going to show you out what the uh, application does, how it's running. Um, now, we've, we're going to start making some changes to various different parts of the application. Um, and we're going to go through and talk about each of these different pieces. And so the big thing that you'll run into that you can't solve is, uh, you know, so this tutorial, we're going to add sorting, filtering, and paging functionality to the student pages. So... We're going to look at how these pages look, and now that our app is up here, so let's go here to the student pages because this is the one that we're really going to work on today. So we're going to make uh, we're going to make this sortable and filterable, and show you how we built all these different pieces so that you can see here that I can select last name, I can select by enrollment date, or we can uh, you know go back to a full list and we can page through this. So all of these are the things that we're going to work on today. Uh, as part of and using Entity Framework to do this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the, um, so we're going to go to Pages, and then Students, and then index.csdhtml. Now, with the following code, so this is the code that we're going to add to it, and we will have added these parts. So now we need to use, uh, you know, use the system, using system, now let's see here. Now we're going to go ahead and you can see we're going to add the name sort and the date sort. So let's go to our code here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do, so this is our HTML here. Now we're going to hit F7 and we're going to jump into the code behind here. So you can see the first thing that we're going to add is the name sort and the date sort. This is the part that's really important to, uh, to use here. Now we're going to put our using system up here. Um, but this uses some of the system parts, and so we're going to use the check the string is null or empty, and we're going to check for name description, um, and this is just checking to say, hey, if you know if um, if the sort order is uh, null or empty, then use name description. Otherwise, use a blank. Then for the date sort, we're going to check and say, hey, if the sort order is equals to date, then we're going to change to date selection. Otherwise, we're going to use date. So. This code here, and then this switch, then switches on the sort order. So we can start to see whether it was a name sort. And if so, we're going to order by descending by last name. If it's a date sort, we're going to sort by order by the enrollment date. If it's the date descending, then we're going to order by date descending and do enrollment date. And then otherwise, the default is that we'll default by last name. So that's why when the page came up, it was sorted by last name. So... Those are, uh, and then what we do is we apply this uh, to the page size. So page size, we always do a four. And then um, we are going to use our paginated list uh, of students and do the create async. And so this paginated list is a, is a very help, help handy part. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about each of these different pieces. So, uh, you know, this, uh, and so last, uh, this list to async uh, here is where we're going to get our list of students. So now we, in the HTML side, we need to actually add into our HTML and we need to add. So 
So we have our table here, and we're going to have our headers, you know, for name sort. Uh, we're going to have the first and middle name, and then we're going to have our date sort here as well. And then the title of the page we're going to set to students. So now as we go back over to our code here, you'll see then this is how we uh, get to having four pages by for starts, right? So we can see we went one, two, three, and four. So if we wanted to instead change this to... Uh, to only be three pages, then we are going to change our page size here to three. Save that. This guy will compile on the fly, and then we're going to reload the page here. And we can see that we're only at three pages now. So really handy with new.net how it compiles on the fly like that so that we don't have to stop the application, restart it, and keep running it. So. You can see that we made that change to the configuration on the page size right here. Very handy, fancy out-of-the-box stuff. I remember spending weeks to build uh, paging into early web applications. So we can also add filtering to this. And so the way that we can add filtering to this is our search string. So in the parameter here, you can see that we have our search string, right? And this search string um, then becomes part of where we check is it null or empty and we check for the search string. So if it's not null or empty, then we um, use a link query and we trim down what our student IQs is. And so we can trim down this list and use the where clause and then say where students last name to upper contains our search string or if their first name contained it. So this actually allows you to then use a link query to search against that data set so that it's actually doing that filtering on the data side. Now, one of the things about this that one might argue is this is interesting because then it's pulling back all of the data from the database in an ordered manner, which is important for the paging and everything. So we'll actually pull back all of the different, uh, or pull back the entire data set, and then trim this down on the server side so that the filtering is actually being done server side. So this is not being done at the database, it's actually being done at the server. So. Um, you know, this is a, an interesting, so when it calls the where clause, it uses the, an iQueryable object, and the filter is a process on the server. In some scenarios, that might call the where method as an extension method on an in-memory collection. For example, if we had done just against the students, uh, where we change the EFCore DB set to repository method, then that would return an iEnumerable collection. This one actually returns an iQueryable. So it actually is going to query against the database using the iQueryable. So you can see here, this is an iQueryable object. And so as we use the iQueryable object, the reason that this is an advantage is it's actually telling any framework to go and make that change and not to do this in memory. So what I said before, a small correction there, is this is actually saying, don't go and just pull all of it back only pull back the stuff that's uh, specific. So we can see the iQueryable object to start uh, goes, and so if you knew there was some kind of a clause you'd want right here, you can include that in the original query. Um, however, then as this goes and does a where clause against that, it's actually querying against the database. So that's actually pretty nifty. Um, it's all happening behind the, the be, uh, behind the scenes, and so you don't have to manage any of that or write any of that. So very fancy, and any framework does a lot of that lifting for us. Now, on uh, when we go and replace that, uh, so in the HTML now, so in the HTML, we can see that we have our search box. So we have our search box, and we get that value, and then this is where that text comes, and then when we hit the button, it's going to fire it back to do that filter. So as we uh, jump back over here to our example, if I only want to find just the ones that have Meredith in it, I can search by either first or last name, and it's search, and you can see it comes back with just Meredith. Or if we uh, say back to the full list, and I want to find something that has uh, you know anything with an A in it, then it'll find any of the names that have an A in the first or last name. Um, so this is really handy um, and can be very useful in filtering down the data to bring only back the data that you need to, not just from the database, or not just to the server, but so this is actually going to filter even at the uh, repository layer into the server and then from the server side down into the, uh, into the UI. So this is only then sending back and forth the data that we need to. Now, we're going to add a uh, paging, and so as part of this, we're also going to be using, uh, that in this section, we're going to use a paginated list class to create um, 
is created to support paging. The paginated list class uses skip and take statements to filter data on the server instead of retrieving all the rows in the tables and, the, and we can show you how it works. So we showed you a little bit here how we did this, but let's go find out where in the code we're gonna use that. So um, on our, in our code behind, uh, we're gonna start off with the paginated list here. So let's go find our paginated list. So as we go to our paginated list class, you can see that as we uh, go to our paginated list, um, this paginated list uh, class is, is extending type list of T and to become a paginated list. So this allows us to define the page index, the total number of pages, which is really just doing a count of all of the uh, number of items and then doing the math uh, dot ceiling to do that divided by the page size to get the total number of pages. Now, um, and so as we, as we do this, in order to build the, the paginated list, so when it creates this, what it's doing is it does all the count, and then it's going to skip and grab just that portion of the paginated list that we need to and return just a paginated list. So this is a really fancy piece, and the create async method in the preceding code takes um, page size and page number and applies the appropriate skip and take statements to the iCoreable. When to list async is called right here um, it, on the iQueryable, it returns a list containing only the requested page. The properties has previous page and has next page are used to enable or disable previous and next paging buttons. So um, you know that's that's pretty cool that it, you get this right out of the box and it allows you to you know set different configurations right here in the app settings. Um, and, and in our case, we actually moved these from the app settings into our code itself. So you can actually see that, um, you know, when we're going to get this value. So uh, we set that value right there. So um, this is a great example of a really simple code sample that gives you paging links. Um, so we can see our paging links uh, right in uh, the HTML. So let's find those here. Um, Yep, you can see the paging links, and you can uh, see it select the first and the last in our table here. Uh, so, let's see where those are. And so we can see that, uh, you know, your color, column headers and everything, that even as we, uh, you know, different, do apply the different filters and sorts, it allows it to do all of the filtering and sorting right from, um, you know, those page links. And so... This overall, um, so the page links are down here at the bottom where we can go and get the next and previous buttons and these will get disabled as you reach to the first and the end of the list. So uh, overall, this is a really simple example and shows you a really easy way to build out some paging and sorting right from your list as well as make it filterable while managing the paging. So I don't think I've ever seen as minimal of amount of a code that you can do this in. So this is really fast and really fancy with .NET uh, Core 6. And so make sure that you pull this code sample down. Um, also, a couple of new announcements. We are starting a coding boot camp. And so we're starting our coding boot camp here at uh, Startup Pack. And so make sure that you check out um, startuppack.com. Uh, this is, uh, you know, and so we're just making this announcement and just getting started. But we're, this is an exclusive .NET Web Development Bootcamp that, with a guaranteed one-on-one -on -one instruction. So we are the only ones that I know of who gives you a guaranteed amount of instruction. So you will have a, a tutor that will be with you for one hour of every day as you work through the bootcamp. And this will, even if the tutor is just sitting there and working through with you, in 14 weeks you can become a full junior stack software engineer. And so we will work through uh, all the different curriculum. You can see exactly what the curriculum pieces are. Um, we will work through HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, and Bootstrap, Microsoft SQL, C Sharp, um, .NET using .NET Core 6, ASP.NET REST APIs, Angular, and we'll, we'll be teaching you how to use all the latest tools. So this is a great opportunity, and I would definitely encourage you to make sure that you sign up and get started. If you're looking for an interesting career as a .NET developer, this is the best boot camp that you can offer. Um, I am authoring it myself, and I, with my experience, and overseeing every single one of the students. And so, um, but working with uh, certified instructors to help you uh, work through this. So. 
Uh, as you have any, you know, feel free to leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because there's going to be a lot more of information coming as we continue to launch the Startup Pack course. But if you uh, feel free to leave comments down below, and otherwise we will catch you guys next time.